Oh, is a brick. For those who know, brick is a brick. Rohat is a brick. But some of us need, including me, I said it, sometimes we need a break from the break. <laughs> that tells us a lot about ourselves, I guess, here in Inshallah. Right. Inshallah, continuing the topic of, of tonight on, on polishing the heart. And uh, I would like to start with this dua that uh, I'm personally making this Ramadan specific, specifically uh, for myself, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of us this. And it's a very simple dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka nafsan mutma'inna. O oh Allah, I ask you, and I will put it that, Allahumma inna nas'aluka, O oh Allah, we ask you, Allahumma inna nas'aluka, nafsan mutma'inna, a soul, a heart, a nafs, a self, that is tranquil, mutma'inna, serene, peace, inside, unlike what we think. Many of us, we're disturbed, with inside the irritable, not, not, uh, not peaceful, and, and we, we always say because of outside circumstances. My parents, uh, this guy, this girl, right? Uh, work, college, stress. We think that peace, we, we achieve it by affecting our circumstances outside. That the way to achieve inner happiness, serenity, peace, tranquility, is by influence, influencing the outside world. And you know what happens? We go to the outside world with a perturbed nafs, perturbed self, trying to influence it, to cause it to be peaceful. And what we end up with is what you see in Egypt. Yes. What you see outside in the outside world in Egypt, I'm Egyptian. It represents the way we are inside. If we're peaceful from inside, we can influence the outside world to bring peace. Peace. Serenity, tranquility does not start from the outside world. This assumption that everybody must treat me well so I can be happy. People should, uh, should not be abusive so I can be happy. Uh, the entire world must be at peace so I can be happy. It will never happen. It doesn't work this way. If you're waiting for the outside circumstances to match what you want and delaying your happiness till that happens, I have news for you. It's never going to happen. This world is not a place of, if you will, outside equilibrium. Rather, the opposite. This dua teaches the Prophet wasallam, the Qur'an, that it's inside. That, can it be that I'm peaceful from inside no matter what happens? I can be in the middle of Egypt right now with the chaos outside, things are not clear, and, and yet I look inside of me and I'm clear, peaceful, serene. I can see things. Don't I want heart like that? No matter what the circumstances is outside, I'm a mutma'in. Myself is mutwa'inna. Oh Allah, we ask you a nafs that is serene, characterized by tarda bi qada'ik, happy with your decree, whatever it is, little, much, uh, with your provision, satisfied with your provision, little, be it or, or, or much, doesn't, doesn't matter. And then, tarju, this nafs that's mutwa'inna is looking forward, yearning, longing. Longing for what? For meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask, we ask for that. That is something I personally, I want to ask for this Ramadan, that I go out of this Ramadan and I've changed from inside. Now, when we speak about nafs mutwa'inna, this tranquil soul, this tranquil nafs ego, if you will, or heart, and how can I describe it? That's a nafs that's calm when dealing with difficult circumstances. Serene when provoked. Serene when provoked or facing delays. A nafs that does not react negatively to annoyance or anger. One that's steadfast in face of difficulties, that can bear calamities without loss of temper. And many of us, oh subhanAllah, like, how can I be that way? The topic I want to discuss today is the how to, basically. How to. And uh, all what I said is in one word, one, one word, one virtue that the Prophet ﷺ told us about. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, it is half our faith. I'm going to be speaking about half our faith. Marriage? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, some people say, but marriage is half. I guess what? If, if you want a peaceful marriage, you need that as well. As we're going to see. So what am I going, what am I speaking about? I'm speaking about the thing that many of us ask. Brother, I cannot lower my gaze. I can't. 
Tell me what to do. I can't have, I want to pray, but I can't be steadfast. One, one day I'm praying, the other day I cannot. I cannot wake up for Fajr every day, it's too much. I cannot pray Qiyam, I know it is good. Don't give me the Hadith, I know. I memorized it. But I can't do it. And if I do it, I do it once. And I can't do it again. Dua, I can't raise my hand and for 10 minutes of Dua, it's one, two minutes and I lose it. What can I do? Khushua. Focus in Salah. When I say, Allahu Akbar, I have a problem. What is it? My mind is everywhere. I can't focus anymore. What? Tell me what to do. This is what I'm speaking about. Why, how can I change? Tell me something that if, if, if I do, I will really change. I have for sure. I say, Allahu Akbar, and I'm focused, and I'm present. And the answer to this, as I always say, to myself, Allah, before you. As Imam al-Ghazali said, the problem is not the advice. The problem is not the answer. I can give you the answer. The problem is, can you follow? He says, al-nasiha sahla, wal mushkil ittiba'ah. Advice is easy. The real problem is, do you really want to change? Will I follow? And no, no, I will. I will just tell me what to do. Tell me something. I want something practical. You know, like we live in the 20th century. Most of you, that's what we want. Give me from the end. One, two, three. Okay. You want to be able to lower your gaze? Yes. I want to be able to focus on Salah? Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you some, and then later, right? And the first slow I give is the following. Uh, do, do you have a car? Do you drive? Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, many of you young enough. I, uh, I know how you drive. So here is the first item. I want you to always drive 10 miles per hour lower than the speed limit. Can you do it? Will you do it? No, it has nothing to do with that. lowering my gaze and driving. Khushu' and salah, driving 10 miles per hour. What? I, and the, the end result is I'm not going to do it. I'm not convinced. This is number one, which is a problem. And how does it have to do with anything? Okay, here's the second one. When you buy something, you go to buy something from Target or Albertsons, which line do you check out from? I want you to always pick the longest. See that many of you are laughing and smiling and like, what is he speaking about? I thought this is going to be something about polishing the heart. <laughs> I am polishing the heart, actually, as we're going to be seeing. What is going on? What, what am I speaking about? I'm speaking about something called realness. Spiritual exercise. What am I speaking about? You know exercising? The importance of exercising? This is exactly what I'm speaking about. Spiritual exercise. The quality I spoke about, as the Prophet Sallallahu told us, or scholars, let me begin with that, the scholars told us, as sabr nusfu iman Patience is half iman half faith. as sabr patience. That's what we're lacking. What, what does sabr have to do with it? Patience, well, I'll tell you. First, yani, excuse me, I'm going to take five, five minutes, it's a little bit theoretical, describing the heart and... What, what is patience and what's going on inside? What does this have to do with anything? Then we're going to go in the second part through spiritual exercise. What we can really do. But after we understand a little bit, in five minutes, just the basics. Here is what's going on. The human being from inside, inside of me. I said I want an absence of my inner. You know, tranquil, that the forces inside of me are at equilibrium. You see the universe around us? There are many forces at play. Gravity, electromagnetic, strong nuclear forces, weak nuclear, there is many types of forces, but they together, they work together. The gravitational pull of the sun with the centrifugal force, and then you have the earth rotating around the sun in equilibrium, peacefully. Electrons and protons, ele electromagnetic forces, right? Inside the, the, the proton, the strong nuclear force, those forces are at equilibrium. Therefore, you have a universe that is peaceful. Inside of us, there are forces too. If we can attain equilibrium between those forces, we will be at peace. So inside of us, and this is a quick summary, uh, we're not composed when I say I, I. You know, I want to be happy. Right? I want, I need, my opinion. This I, we think of I as one. My thoughts, what are you thinking about? What is your drive? Mine. And subhanAllah scholars telling, be careful. When you say I, me, I'm not one. 
from inside, and the first thing to realize, that this is very important, that inside of me, from a spiritual perspective, I'm not just the stomach and the brain, and no, spiritually, there is two basic entities I want to be speaking about, that we need to have equilibrium between. One, which is the nafs, what scholars term, if you will, the ego, the self. And that is the center of two forces, and I'm summarizing. The force of lust, shahwa, uh, the lust for the opposite gender, uh, lust for uh, food, wanting to eat, uh, entertainment. We share that with animals. Animals have a nafs too. If you want to understand what a nafs is, go look on a cow. What makes a cow happy? Eating, drinking. Look at a hyena, look at a lion. Anger. And how a predator acts, right? And that, that, that part is not, the human being is not just a nafs. That we share with animals, it doesn't make us special. That is the second part to the human being. That we share with angels. Al-Qalb, the spiritual heart. This special faculty given to the human being by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which we can understand, comprehend things, know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, desire, will, aspire, love. And the heart has one property that's important that I'm speaking about here. Al-qalbu ya'qil, as the Quran says. The heart can restrain, comprehends, wants, desires, and can restrain. Peace happens, so you have forces of the nafs, two main forces. Lust and anger. The heart has the force of restraint, al-aql. If the heart can restrain the force of lust and can restrain the force of anger, equilibrium and peace happens. The, our problem is we have two entities. And you know what's going on? We attend the qiyam like this. Allahu Akbar, we pray. As yani, Imam Uthman told you, I'm nourishing the heart. I'm supplying the heart with forces. It's getting stronger, right? It should overpower the self. But guess what happens? I walk out of this door and what do I do? I backbite, I watch TV, I, I overeat, I empower the nafs. What happens? I empower both sides. Have you ever seen a, a battle? You know what happens in the Middle East sometimes? Iraq, Iran war, for example, those of you who know. And you have people that are supplying both sides with arms. You don't supply one side only. Why he win? No, no, you supply him a little bit and then him a little bit. So I keep the war raging. That's what. That's why many of us complain. I'm trying, you know, before I, I became a better Muslim, I, I, it seemed I was at, in, at more equilibrium. Some people say that. It seemed that life was easier for me. Once I started to seek the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of a sudden, it is, where is this peace we're speaking about? It is a struggle. I'm at agony. Why? Well, before you started the, the, the path to Allah, the nafs was overwhelming the heart. There was no heart left, if you will. Now, when the, I start to empower the heart, and at the same time, I'm empowering the nafs, the self. What happens? Nobody wins. War happens. And tomorrow, I empower the heart, and then I empower the nafs. It continues to rage inside of me. Nobody wins. To be able to win, I must, if you will, restrain the forces of the self and empower the forces of the heart. What am I speaking about? What is patience and what does it have to do with this definition after we understood it? Those two forces, lust and anger. When I say, for example, what the question I ask you, I can't lower my gaze, what does that mean? So let's analyze it. Can't lower my gaze. Lowering the gaze is lust, right? That's a call of the self. My nafs is telling me, look. There is this movie, look. And when the self commands something, if the heart is powerful enough, it can restrain it. No, you will not. But what, what I'm saying is what? My nafs is so strong, so powerful, my heart is so weak, that whenever a call from the nafs comes, I cannot resist it. I have no patience. A sabr, therefore scholars define sabr as what? Tabad da'i al-qalb, da'i al-aql wa al-deen, amam da'i al-shahwa wa al-ghadab. They define patience as the steadfastness of the force of the heart. This call of the heart, this restraint of the heart, in front of the call of the self, lust and anger. So when I say I can't lower my gaze, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I can't be patient. I don't have enough patience. I, I cannot be patient on my shahu. I see food, what happens? Uh, chocolate cake, ice cream, I must have it. You, see, you know what I'm speaking about. It must be, it must, that's an nafs. You must eat this now. And many of us even don't resist harder, you know? 
مؤدب يعني بيقول مرض بتنسب سليب اوكي ايت طيب تيرن اون تي في وات ايفر ذا سيلف سيز كانت ريزست كانت ريزست ات اول same thing when when i said the second thing i cannot pray i cannot be steadfast in my prayer you know what that is again i cannot be patient over song i cannot be patient over wearing hijab i cannot be patient over i can't be patient to do something i can do it once twice but not more than that i can do it for one minute not for one hour isn't it lack of patience i can study for five minutes but not for one hour i can read one page but not 100 pages Lack of patience, when you look at it. When I say, I can't concentrate on Salah. My khushwa, what I'm saying actually, this is a bigger problem that has to do with patience. What is it? I'm telling you, I say Allahu Akbar, what happens to my mind? <laughs> Wonders, right? Really, like, even now, some of us, I'm speaking and you're already somewhere else. <laughs> happens, I know. And I'll tell you something, the reason I'm speaking about this, because I think the next generation, your generation, This problem is even worse. And I'll speak about why in just one minute. Why it's, it's quite challenging. And it's a disaster. Sabr is half faith. Every good quality that we have, all good akhlaq, all good manners, derive from patience. How? Uh, I'll give you just one example. Lust. Uh, I was once giving uh, a lecture to the youth in ICUI, and it was about the purpose of life. And I, I, to just for illustration, I got this chocolate cake in front of me, and you know, plates and things. And I, I was speaking about it, right? But I saw those guys in the front row, you know, young guys, maybe your age, they're sitting and their eyes are glitched. <laughs> and they can't wait, you know, just finish up fashion, right? The moment I finished, you know, I finished, I, I, I meant to give the cake to them, right? And they didn't wait. They jumped. <laughs> those guys in the front row, they jumped. They didn't wait for the plates. They started grabbing with their hands. <laughs> and you know, like jumping and grabbing and eating, right? That's what? It's shabu. And irresistible, right? You see that? What, what the outcome of it is a very bad quality. This is not good manners. Now, a couple of sisters sitting in the back like the sisters here. They, they also wanted chocolate cake. They have like they want it. So they came down. They just did this and they looked. Once they saw what's going on, simply enough, they just did this and turned around and walked away. That is if They had desire for the cake, see? But they, when they saw what's going on, I'm not going to be this one. I have enough aqf, restraint in the heart, I don't lower myself, I'm not an enemy. No, you're not going to have chocolate cake today, if that's what it means. That khuluq is if Like Yusuf alayhi salam. You see something, haram, and you said, look, you say, no, I can't. This is, this is, I, can't, I can't be this way. Only when I'm married. Other than that, I'm not going to look. That's it. Anger. The force of anger. When I, somebody tells me something and I'm upset. And I'm powerful enough, I can reply back. If I choose to confront this anger with what? I'm not. That's forbearance. When somebody wrongs me, and I, I want revenge, and I confront it with that. This is forgiveness. This force of sabr is dissension inside of us. Now, why are we lacking sabr? Why? How can I attain it? How can I be, how can I be a sabr? I'll tell you something, an, an experiment, and then a hadith, and then we'll go from here. And this is an experiment scientists did. They're experimenting with the concept of patience. And they said patience is the ability to wait. Very interesting. Ability to wait. Delay. Pause. Slow down. <laughs> so they said it's the ability to wait. Delay gratification, basically. basically. Knowing that there is a big <coughs> reward if you wait. So they got two species of monkeys. Cotton head monkeys and uh, common marmosat, if you want to know which species. Uh, two species of monkeys. And they did an experiment. They're very similar. They provided them with food. And they made the experiment. If they were to wait, they get more food. And they watched what would happen. And one species of monkeys, they can never wait. You put anything in front of them, they eat it immediately. Immediate, can, not, not the concept of waiting doesn't exist. The other species, they found amazingly, they wait. They choose, they see the food, they wait. Till they get the, the, the biggest sum of food. 
And he said, why? The brain size is the same. The, why? Why is this species more patient than the other one? What caused them to, what, why? And you know what they found? There's one difference. Their eating habits. Their eating habits. The first species, they eat insects and bugs. So therefore they react to stimulus. You know, you eat bugs, you see the bug, you have to be fast. You see it? And you grab it and you eat quickly, right? The second species, they eat the gum, you know, coming from the tree, the secretion of the tree. So they sit beside the tree and they wait and they wait till it comes out and then they start eating it. And now, what this, this experiment is showing what? Their eating habits, our eating habits influences our ability to be patient. So I need to, uh, what, what is our eating habits? Now that reminds me with the main, now the main topic, the, the Prophet said, this is a proof of that as-sabr with as-sabr, man yasbir, yusabbir Allah. Wa ma u'tiya ahadun a'ta'an khayran wa la awsa' min as-sabr. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever exercises patience, Allah will make him patient. And nobody is given anything faster or better than patience. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this concept of what I said, riyadat al spiritual exercise. That you can build sabr by exercising it. There is a concept of, you know, riyadah, exercise. If I want muscles, I go to the gym. And I have to sweat. And I carry weights. Right? You guys know that. And you want biceps, you do this exercise. One, and you do, you, you do one, you go there one time. You have to go repeatedly, right? And you go there, and you expect to sweat. You go to really sweat. It's going to be hard. And if you do it, and you do it, and you do it, you develop a muscle. The muscles of patience, the Prophet said, they are developed. There are things that when we do, we develop those muscles. And things that when we do, we lose the muscles. That's the concept of spiritual exercise. The set of exercises necessary spiritually to develop a muscle of a given characteristic, if you will. So, what, what does that mean? Now you understand what we were saying in the beginning, when I was telling you, uh, remember what we said? I want to lower my gaze, what did we say? Drive 10 miles per hour lower than the speed limit. Why? Do you see what, what? Patience is the ability to wait. The ability to delay. The pause. Impatience is when I get agitated when things are not happening in my time table. I, I, I'm losing control. I can't, I can't sit. I, to develop patience, I need some spiritual exercise, if you will, that will help me, will help me develop this muscle. And unfortunately, lifestyle as of today helps the opposite. And it's something I, I, I work with technology, I've been observing. It is very disturbing, really. The pace of life, very fast. The way we walk, the way we eat, the way, we, we, our internet service, 100 megabit per second, I must download it now immediately. I click the button, if the window doesn't open in two seconds, I change the computer. <laughs> we, we're trained that way. It's, it's even getting worse. I mean, I, I work in the industry. At work, they give me two screens. One is not enough. And you, you, you go to people and they're opening, what, 10 applications at the same time. So I'm simulating something, emailing, browsing, right? You know what I mean? And then I'm used to the concept of multitask. My brain must be doing five things at the same time. And then I go to Salah, Allahu Akbar, and I'm expecting to do what? Go back. Focus on one thing? I can't. I've been trained. You see that? I've been trained. This is training. Training on the opposite. Without knowing. I cannot delay my gratification. I can't. It must be now, immediately. Right? So spiritual exercises. I'm going to give you some secular and some from the deen. Things that we can do, if you will, to develop this muscle of patience. And yeah, look, I know it's difficult, right? But honestly, if you want biceps, if I want muscles, I go to the gym, don't tell me, oh, I'm sweating, that is too hot. You have to sweat, right? I'm sorry. I mean, there is this poem that says, I'm amazed at the seeker of purity. I'm amazed at the seeker of purity. That when the time of polishing comes, he complains of harsh treatment. Son, when we beat the rug, you know when people beat the rug to get the dirt out, you know what I'm speaking about? 
you probably you never saw that. Like you get the rug and you beat it. So you get the so saying, son, when the, when we beat the rug, the beating is directed against the dirt in the rug. Son, the harsh treatment is directed against the dirt in you, not against you. Polishing the heart, if you will. There is a number of ways. I'm speaking about the harsh way, unfortunately, the mujahada way. Jihad in nafs, if you will. Speaking about jihad. Yeah, that's mujahada in nafs. Riyadu in nafs. You know, sandpaper is rough. I need to do, and it's not one stroke. I'm going to do once and twice and twice till I'm polished. And I must know what set of exercises I need, what type of weights I need to carry, like the gym, so I can develop this muscle of supper. And I'm going to give you some that relates to things that we do in, in life that I think are detrimental, especially to the new generation. It is very serious. And I said one about driving. Why, why am I driving 85? I go on the highway, 75. Why? Uh, I must, why, why do I have, why? I'm saving three minutes? Why am I in a high, you know this slowing down concept? Put it this way, the first thing I want to slow down. Slow down. There is a saying, life is short. Therefore, we all should move slower. Isn't it short? It's short, why is it? Think. Slow down. Unlike what everything is telling us to rush, to work at the speed of computers, to do that. Why are you in a high? Why am I in a high? Slow down. The way we speak. Egyptians worse than others. I'm speaking about myself. We speak fast. We can't wait. We speed up. Well, why is it? Can you speak slower? Can you do that? Slow down. So this is what going on the longest line, not on the shortest one. And and take it. The, this develops in the internet. I spoke about the internet. Here is a spiritual exercise. Can you get the, the slowest internet instead of the fastest one? Can you do that today? Why not? Two megabit per second. I'm not I mean, I, I was there when, when the, with computers with 48 kilobytes of memory, and that's it. Not megabytes, kilobytes. And in my time, when you wanted to, to open a program, you get a tape, not even a CD, you know what a tape is? And you put it, and you press play, and you wait five minutes. And you... you, you you better hope that you know there is nothing wrong with the connection because there's a tape loading error. Those who seem clear like that. And you have to repeat five minutes to open a file. Patience. Nowadays you click and it better open. I'm suggesting that you do the opposite. Why don't you buy a slower computer? <laughs> no, see, I'm not. That's why I'm saying, do you want? Do we want to change? But I need the faster computer. I, I, I need it. I, I know I, I work and I am doing things, right? And I need a faster computer. Okay, I have, a, I have another exercise for you. In the past, people that wanted to develop the spiritual exercise, especially against anger and being irritable, one of them had a servant that was very ill-mannered. You know, a very ill-mannered servant. You tell him something, he argues. You tell him, he argues again. You have to tell, tell him five times before he does anything. It's annoying. So somebody came and told him, yeah, why don't you get rid of him? It's a servant. And he said, no, I'm keeping him. I'm practicing patience on him. He's teaching me patience. So uh, today, uh, we don't have servants here. No, we have some servant. The computer is a servant. The computer serves you. So I want you to do the following. Go, if you have a, you have a Mac or an iPad, install Time Out Free. What is Time Out Free? It's an app. You know what it will do? Every now and then it will pop up. Telling you pause and we'll pause the screen and you have to wait three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it will do it randomly. <laughs> what will happen? Uh, my initial response will be what? Not now! You know, and you find the, the burst of anger. You know, like this is anger. And this is the training you require. When it happens, calm down. How, how can you take kids? Marriages have the deed. You think you don't need yeah, patience in marriage? I have news for you. You don't think you need patience with kids? I have news for you. Even my own son, one time, one time they were discussing with my sister. And like again, the concept of, and she was telling, look, it's girls that do everything. We, we do everything. Even we, we get pregnant, you know, we give birth. I mean, we, we take care of the kids. It's, it's the girls that are, yeah, really. Boys, you guys have, yeah, I mean, what patience do you have? 
I said, no, guys have patience room too. I said, how? I said, well, guys have to listen to their wives complain all the time. <laughs> See, they have to have patience. Correct? Patience. We can't. Right? So that's a spiritual exercise. Uh, I want to lower my gaze. The Prophet ﷺ told us there is a relation between, between lowering the gaze and fasting. But brother, I fast, and you know what happens? Nothing. <laughs> I fast Ramadan, but I still have the same problem. Why? I'll tell you why. What happens when we fast? And do you notice what fasting does? When we fast, you restrain what? Eat the call of the next. I can't. Somebody insults you. When you're fasting, what, what is the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ? In me saw him. Anger and lust, I, I face them with no. I'm training the nafs. But wait a minute, here's where we fail. Fasting, fasting, fasting. You know what is the most important moment of fasting, in my opinion? Is when we break our fast. Why? Here is what happens. I'm fasting, fasting, fasting. Three minutes for eight or iftar. Two minutes. One minute. And then zero minutes. And then I open the gates for my nafs. Here is the table, here is food, and what do we do? Open the gates and you tell your next what? Go. <laughs> Enjoy, right? And we break the past. We shatter it you know, with vengeance. <laughs> I'm going to show you. But I am not eating for what? 16 hours? Oh, I'm going to really get you back. And we, how do we eat when we break our fast? And the quantities we aim, we eat, right? So you want, we want to develop patience, fast, this way. This is the it's an exercise. Fast. And then come to the masjid for measure salah. And then when it's time to break the fast, and then you eat, eat three, four dates, the sunnah, and then come and pray maghrib. After maghrib, start doing dhikr. After dhikr, go home. Can I tell you something? Can you fast and break your fast on nothing? But dates and water and bread only. Can you imagine that? Can you fast Mondays and Thursdays every week? And I'm breaking my, do you understand the concept? There is no iftar. My iftar is what? Dates, bread, and water. That's it. Can you do it? That's what's necessary. That's a spiritual exercise recommended by teachers. And this is our deen. They tell you do that. Oh, brother, that's true. Oh, can't, right? Okay, I'll tell you something easier. Fast, and you go to the masjid and you look and I want you to do the following. Look on the dishes in front of you. Look at the dish that you like the most. And don't eat it. <laughs> Sit. Can we do that? Can we, can we skip the two favorite dishes that we have on the table? It's a spiritual exercise. Another one. You, to develop this mental focus. How long do I have? One minute. <laughs> Mental focus exercise, to be able to move, to focus more. In the past it used to be the following. You tell people, I want you to read a book, you know, and you read, 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 and it's exciting, and when you get to the last chapter, close the book, put it on the shelf for two months. <laughs> Don't read the end. Now nobody reads. And unfortunately I have to say this, uh, although I don't want to. When you go watch a movie, the next time you watch the next movie, you go to the theater, half an hour before it ends, walk out. <laughs> Not knowing the ending. Can you? See, our minds can't take, I must know. I must know, I, I, I can't. What do you mean don't know the ending? As a matter of fact, it's getting worse. Now you watch YouTube video, what happens? I can't resist but forward. You <laughs> can't watch half an hour. Too long. Five minutes, I just, come on guys. Quickly, tell me, go, go to the point. Boring. Can I tell you a spiritual exercise? Get bored. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have What is boredom? What is, go and read what's the definition of boredom. It is the inability to be patient. I can't just sit by myself. Do you notice this? You sit by yourself and immediately where is my smartphone? Let's, let's check my email. Let's serve the internet. Why? Why? See, those gadgets are killing us. I can't be my, my, by myself anymore. The concept of khalwa. This is one of the elements of Mujahedat in Nafs, being alone with myself. Do you have time alone with yourself? Alone meaning what? Not with the phone. The phone, you're not alone with the cell phone. 
this atikaf, this like sitting in the masjid is supposed to be that time for me alone. Completely. Can I do that? Five minutes. How about talking? Talking too much. It's another, another destructive ail ailment. Can we spend the rest of the day tonight without talking? The Prophet وسلم, there is many, many narrations about speaking. Unnecessary. As a matter of fact, one story, a man went to a teacher to, to learn. Again, the discipline of spiritual exercise. And, and he traveled and he went and he, he, alhamdulillah, he's polite, he didn't lock the door. He waited patient. He waited at the door, you know, till the teacher comes out. And the sheikh comes out and the sheikh says, Assalamu alaykum. Wa alaykum assalam. And the sheikh walks away. And the man said, well, I wait for him again. Waits. After hours, the sheikh comes back. Salamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. He goes inside the house. The guy came there. I'm going to next morning. Same thing. Three days, the same thing. And the guy said, he's not talking to me. So the, the next morning, he walks out. Salamu alaikum. Sheikh, wait. I traveled a long distance to learn from you. I want to learn, you know, spiritual development and and and. And you're not talking to me. And you know what he told him? He said, Lisani Ida taraktu my tongue is like a scorpion. If I leave it, it stings me. Our tongues are like scorpions. When I look at Egypt, for example, Egyptians, we cannot... Did you ever meet an Egyptian if you ask him, pro morsi or anti morsi He has to give you an opinion. Did you ever meet an Egyptian who said, I don't know? That's... that's we need to develop that. In terms of... Here is another one exercise that's important. Go and speak to someone that's of opposing view. Right? And tell him what is your opinion. And let him speak for half an hour. <laughs> Don't say a word. And when he's done, hug him, say thank you, and change the topic. Don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, need, we, need, we, need, we cannot listen anymore. We actually end, we compete for airtime. Somebody speaks, and you, you finish the sentence for him. Okay, come on, get faster. I know what you want to say. I know, I know, I know. That's terrible. We compete for airtime. Uh, he says something, he, he says a good story, I have a better story that I have to say. Why? Let others have the glory. Can you restrain your words? We need that. that. That's kind. I prefer to be kind than to be all right all the time. I have to be able to do that. But the concept of, yani the final concept, because I'm out of time, and that's something actually we can practice from the deen. The best way to learn patience, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in multiple places, dhikr. The dhikr of Allah. So if you want to develop the muscle of patience, dhikr is one of the best ways to do it. Mention, was, was bir li hukmi rabbika fa innaka bi a'yunina, wa sabbih bi hamdi rabbika, wa sabbih bi hamdi rabbika qabla tulu'a al-shamsi wa qabla al-ghurub. That's in Surah Qaf, for example. So for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always relates sabr, patience, Commanding, have patience. Fasbir ala ma yaqumun. Have patience over what they say. Wasabbih bihamd rabbik. And be continuously in the state of tasbih. Dhikr. When the sun rises, what? At the evening, at the dhikr develops patience. Why? Five times a day. Including now. Time for salah. Allahu Akbar. Right? After salah, what is the sunnah? That I should be sitting there doing what? Dhikr. You know, 33, subhanAllah, 33, alhamdulillah, 33. Can I do that? And how do we do things? SubhanAllah, 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 SubhanAllah. Can I do it slowly? There is a way, Wallah, I do those, I'm, I'm not joking. And it's a training. Yourself will tell you, go, go, come on. You need to check this, your phone, get it, right? And it's actually, no, yeah, that's is so for myself. Sit down. It's five minutes. It's not going to cave. Five minutes. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it slowly. The concept of muraqaba. This is, by the way, dhikr has everything to do with the ability to focus. When you say Allah wa Akbar, dhikr is about that. I'm completely focused on one. I have the ability to detach. I can bring my mind at any time. Stop thinking about this. Come back. You know the time machine concept? You know, like, as Muslims, before traveling, you must say the dua. Not you must. It's recommended to say dua is suffer, right? Don't travel alone. Don't ride a car without saying the dua. And I'm telling you something. Do not ride your time machine without saying the dua. What time machine? Do you have a time machine? 
You guys have a time machine? Yeah, we do have a time machine, actually. And we ride it all the time. You know where is this? It's here. Sometimes, as I'm speaking now, most of you are in the future. What is going to be happening next? It's going to finish, then we're going to have salah, then I'm going to walk outside, they have refreshments. I'm going to be eating, right? And you know what I mean? Anxiety de develops when I'm thinking about something in the future. I can't solve it, and I can't bring my brain back again to the present. I'm worried. What will happen? What will, will I get married? What if I do get married? Is, is this guy right? And then you will start what? Practicing the scenario. This will happen, this will happen, and you start living it, and you're living in the future. And Allahu Akbar, and where am I? I'm still there. Right? Some people are in the past. Why did he say that to me? Oh God, life is miserable. People are so bad. I will show him. Why did, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. I'm living in the past. Time machine. Dhikr brings me to the present. The essence of dhikr is that dhikr is being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I'm, as I'm speaking right now, are you with me? Are you present here at this minute? Do you feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the concept of uns, solace? You know when two people love each other, you know, you know a love scene, and you, unfortunately, it's what I, and they sit with each other, and the world drops, and they're completely engulfed in that moment, and nothing else matters. And you know this? Think is about having this with Allah. The ability to feel uh, nothing is more important than this, this minute. I can call my brain at any minute. Stop thinking about the future. Stop thinking about the past. Come right now. Reconnect with Allah first before you think about the future. That's the That's so long. Can you do that? Actually, if, if you leave it up to me, I would say instead of the salah, next time, yeah, instead of this salah, we can do a session like where you sit 20 minutes in dhikr. Can we sit 20 minutes in dhikr? How many... How many times do we say subhanAllah a day? Uh, ask yourself, 100, 200? What if I ask you to do 3,000? Can you do it? Why not? Why can't I sit for half an hour, five minutes, in a state of muraqaba, watchfulness, just cleaning and watching my thoughts, being in thick of Allah subhanahu wa That's what we need. That's what we, we didn't develop the muscles of patience. That's why. I think the spiritual exercises, the heart is not touched. We're not patient all the time. And Wallahi, be careful. Your generation with technology, it's getting worse. My son, I finished with this practically. So how to deal with it? Look, when I was growing up, my father used to do this to me. Again, I didn't understand it, the reason. He would see a toy. I want that toy. And you know what he would say? No. Why? No reason. Because I said so. And he will do something even worse. Here is the money, and he gives me the money, and here is the store, and I stand in front of the toy for one hour with the, the money in my pocket, and looking at the toy, and yet I cannot buy it. Why did he do that? Was he cruel? No, he's teaching me. Here is the money you restrain. My kids, when they, technology, I'm not against it. But you know what I do to them? They want to, to play an angry bird. Okay, here, right? They start playing. Ten minutes later, I come, turn it off right now. Why? I'm in the middle of it. I'm a... That is exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> Baba, you're so mean. <laughs> no, I want you to learn patience. I want you to be able to restrain at any given time. So, not giving them technology is not developing patience. It is the opposite. It's giving myself technology and learning to disengage at any minute. Salah is a good exercise. Allahu Akbar, you drop everything. Can we pray in the beginning of the time? It's a good exercise. Sorry for taking more than my time. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik la ilaha illa anta nistaghfiru wa nakutu laik wa al-asr inda nisada nati khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu s-salihat wa tawasaw s-haqqi wa tawasaw s-sab. Jazakum Allah kulla khair. Jazakum Allah khair for being patient. Takbir. 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 Takbir.
Sorry, man. Yeah. 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 Why didn't you guys go to Garden Grove? Which one? 
Inside. If not, then we can have a good little intimate session with Brother Omar. So, if, uh, without further ado, he's going to continue on our topic. If I can just ask you to head on over up here, please. And I was also asked to uh, please ask that if people want to talk out, you know, if they want to head out of the masala and talk, that's totally fine. But I was asked if you can speak in the back of the mission and not in the front. Uh, so, I was just told to tell you that. So, without further ado. Um, a little bit entertaining as well. 
Here's a disclaimer from the very beginning. You're probably not going to hear anything right now that you haven't heard before, if not even tonight. Um, but I always go by the verse, Remind one another, for indeed there is benefit that comes out of reminding one another. So, I'm going to remind you of some hadith and some stories that we all know, but this is a month that I believe is more focused on worship as opposed to learning necessarily. We have all year to learn. This month, everything is multiplied. Everything you do, all the types of worship that you do are multiplied. So we focus on, the, on, on worshiping this month as opposed to learning new things. There's a dua that our Nabi Wasallam said very often this month, and we all know this dua, Allahumma inna ka'afuun kareem tuhibbul af fa'afu anni. Allahumma inna ka'afuun kareem tuhibbul af fa'afu anni. We all know this du'a. I'm going to quickly go through the difference between the name of Allah al-Afu and al-Ghafur. They're both sometimes mistakenly translated as the same thing, which is the forgiver, the one who forgives. Others translate Ghafur as the forgiver and Afu as the pardoner. What is the difference? The word Ghafara does not mean to forgive. It does not mean to forgive. The original word of the me the original meaning of the word is to cover or to conceal. Uh, the helmet in the Arabic uh, language is called the milfar. The helmet that you wear on your head, it covers, it conceals your head. And so ghafara or al ghafur is the one who covers, the one who conceals. He covers our sins, he protects other people from seeing our, us, us sinning. He protects us from the evil of our own sins. The name Ghafur is mentioned 91 times in the Quran. Let's talk about the name Al-Afu. Al-Afu is different than Ghafur. What does this mean? Al-Afu means to 